have on that front? You said you use cover crops. I mean, can you talk about what your specific goals are on that front and, and also, you know, in, interject any, any way that you're getting help from your trusted advisors? Yeah. So when I was younger out of, out of college, I was, I wanted to be a big farmer. I'm like, let's just get bigger. Let's keep growing that way. And as I, I get older and wiser, I'm like, let's just do more with what we have. And, uh, and I think a lot of that uh, comes back to, to sustainability. I mean, we have to take care of what we have and leave it in a uh, better place for the next generation. And, and you think about it, having the soil life is big for me. I mean, we have to have something growing on that soil at all, all times. I mean, we just got done with wheat here uh, about a month ago. We're getting ready to start planting our, 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 over, our, our overwintering cover crop now. Uh, just to have something growing on there, getting that soil biology, keeping that soil active and not dead. Um, and that's been great. Uh, with cover crops, we went from, we used to be started with just cereal or I going to beans. Now we've changed it. We have a lot, a lot of blends that way. And Lee's been helpful with that on how, what to do, how to kill it, what happens when we don't kill it, how, how, how to plant through this kind of stuff. Um, the last few years have been very challenging. I mean, we have, we've had wet maize and haven't been able to kill cover crops. We bought an ATV sprayer so we can get through these things now. It's just been, uh, it's just been challenging, but the benefits have been there. Our best yields have come, especially with beans that have come after that rye cover crop, whether we, we planted no till into it or worked it up. It's just, uh, it's amazing how that, how the soil and how the health of that soil has changed just by using cover crops drastically the last three years. I mean, the, just the, the mellowness has changed. Uh, the, 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 our, Cash crop stress has been a lot less. Our weeds have been less. So, I mean, it's work. It takes time. It's not easy by any means. We've had a lot of challenges the last couple of years, but it's something that uh, I truly believe, and I think it's going to be beneficial to our farm. Uh, we got a lot of neighbors that shake their heads probably that we don't know what we're doing, but uh, uh, the it's, a, it's a, a chance for us to make more money on the farm, especially with the cattle. I mean, that's uh, using that cover crop. That's something we can start feeding in the future. I mean, it's just uh, the... The options are endless with their cover crops. It's just coming up with the, with the with the strategy for them, and then the backup plan if that first strategy doesn't work. Because as we've seen the last two years, uh, plan one probably isn't going to work on the first of May. So we have to have that backup plan on what to do next. But the, the biggest thing for us is just soil health and uh, just uh, keeping that healthy. Gotcha. Okay. Is there any uh, is there any thinking about some of the? I mean, you you. <laughs> There's a lot of a lot of talk, talk, talk about um, about carbon and, and trying to get growers to be kind of integrated into that whole system from a standpoint of being able to, you know, rightly so, if they're doing more to do this, to to be able to be paid a premium. I mean, I, any I guess for any of you, maybe that's that's Jim, but you know, across the board, um, what, what what do you see as the roadmap to that? Is is this is this something that's you know, going to happen in the near term or is something you guys are looking at now or what's, you know, what's the view on, on, on the payoff on, you know, sustainability for carbon and so forth? Well, I'll take a swing at it first. Um, it's interesting. I'm, I was double booked for, from nine to 10. I'm supposed to be on a call with Bear talking about carbon. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, I think the, the path to carbon um, has many different roads. And I think a lot of people have different philosophies on how to get there. Um, Brad's already doing things with the cover crops, um, you know, strip till, those types of things over a conventional till. I'm not, I mean, that's, that's definitely a, a big step forward. But one of the things that we're looking at from a Windbuild United standpoint and the answer plots is how do we correlate um, more carbon by more biomass. If we're producing more biomass, um, we believe that we're sequestering more carbon back into the soil. If we're being really efficient on nitrogen use, then if there's no nitrogen left at the end of the season, the microbes aren't as active, so they're not breaking down carbon. So we're trying to look at it um, from that angle as well as the, uh, the cover crop um, and conservation tillage piece. Now, if I told you we had it figured out, I, I would be uh, misleading you. We don't have it figured out, but I think that it's a path that you can figure out um, fairly quickly in terms of you know how fast things happen in, in agriculture. And then we have um, TruTerra, which is a tool that we can not only model that out, but we can measure it. Mm -hmm. 